I'm Eugene Stramatnikov, and I will talk about the Intel x86 uh, CPU microcode packaging in RHEL and how weird it is. Um, so, I work as a software engineer uh, in RHEL, um, in Red Hat, and uh, I'm responsible for uh, backporting. Uh, various drivers as a part of the driver based program and I'm also responsible for uh, maintaining uh, out of three kernel module packaging infrastructure in RHEL. Also, I'm a stress developer and uh, uh, unfortunately the, this conference doesn't have anything related to debugging and tracing so I'm not talking about it. But rather, I'm going to talk about something else I'm doing uh, as part of my job in Red Hat. It's uh, packaging uh, Intel x86 CPU microcode for RHEL. Um, so it's a pretty straightforward agenda. Uh, I'm going uh, to elaborate a bit about what microcode is and uh, how it's used and how it's uh, updated in uh, Linux. Then uh, I'm going to deep uh, to dive in uh, real specific aspects of uh, microcode updates package. Um, so microcode is a, a set of well, is a set of instructions. It's a, basically a code that is. A, run inside uh, of uh, an ASIC. Usually it's uh, related to uh, CPUs that implement some externally defined uh, instruction set architecture, but it's run on the uh, instruction set architecture implemented in the ASIC itself, which is usually uh, more simple and uh, more straightforward, but also uh, it uh, allows some degree to to some degree control the way it is uh, run, uh, especially after the ASIC has been taped out. Um, and uh, the process of uh, changing this behavior uh, after well, on a running processor is referred to microcode updates. And uh, with respect to Intel specifically, it's uh, been available since uh, P6 architecture, so that is uh, Pentium Pro. Uh, even though it's well used uh, by Intel for its uh, processes internally, mostly for like testing, built-in, uh, uh, bring up, uh, built-in self-test and some uh, handling of uh, FPU corner cases stuff. But uh, yeah, it became uh, more prominent over the years, especially until uh, after some uh, recall inducing bugs and uh, such as FD and F00F bug. Uh, and yeah, uh, it's uh, uploaded onto the CPU by like writing uh, the address uh, of uh, microcode update data to a specific uh, machine specific register. It's hexadecimal 79. And uh, usually it's pretty boring because, well, uh, processors have bugs and most people are even don't know about them. The ones I've mentioned are well known, especially because they haven't been fixed. Uh, but uh, since uh, 2018, for reasons, it became more pr prominent and more uh, of interest of general pu public. So yeah, it's probably warranted talking about. Microcode uh, uh, itself, uh, Microcode update itself on uh, Intel x86 CPUs uh, has the following forward. It is prepended by a 48 byte uh, header and then it contains uh, encrypted uh, microcode update data itself, and then it probably can have, uh, it possibly can have some uh, extended signature 
stuff after the data, which is even though described for like 50 years now, started to be used only with uh, ultra wake CPUs to uh, describe and uh, some uh, latest Atom CPUs to describe the additional signature that the microcode, uh, microcode update is applicable for. Um, yeah, the most uh, identifying part of a microcode update is its uh, CPU signature, what, what is uh, microcode update uh, designated for. Uh, it uh, has a kind of weird format format since uh, CPU signature a bit uh, evolved over time and it's not as uh, publicly CPU referred, CPU models are referred as like usually it's like uh, family mo uh, model stepping triad but uh, CPU signature has the bits mixed up and some of that are not like mixed up but actually added and not uh, uh, always added but only in case the base family is F and all that is thanks to Windows NT that checks on, checked only the first, the lowest three bits of the family. That's why uh, Intel has to uh, bump the family instead of eight use the last uh, available four bit uh, number that is uh, 15 and to get uh, even more uh, CPU families, which uh, Intel used only for the later Itanium iterations, for, uh, namely for Itanium 2, uh, they decided like there is also extended family that is added to the base family value is if the base family is F. Fun stuff. Um, yeah, uh, there is also some ways to discern uh, processors that are uh, designated for specific uh, ma market segments like for server market or for uh, mobile market. It's uh, used not the uh, processor type uh, field, which is originally used for designating specifically overdrive and double uh, socket uh, system processors, but uh, an additional uh, field that is uh, presented in well, yet another machine specific register uh, and contains this uh, three bit value that well, specifies the segment uh, the processors is designated for and also the uh, and the mask in the microcode header specifies what kind of uh, segments uh, this uh, microcode applies. So far this distinction was only useful only for uh, IML. Uh, Ember Lake processors, yes. Um, so with regards to Linux, uh, the historically was, uh, well, historically there was one mechanism that is, was used for CPU up, uh, updates. Uh, that is just piping the di data into a special file, uh, special device file. And uh, then uh, when uh, more sensible gen generic uh, firmware loading mechanism has appeared, it uh, microcode loading has been converted into it. So, uh, and you have basically a special fi file in CSFS that allows triggering this microcode update by writing the one and uh, uh, then the kernel using uh, request firmware mechanism will try to uh, get the new uh, microcode that is now treats uh, like exactly like any other firmware. In addition to that, there is also the so-called early update mechanism that is uh, executed early in the boot stage when there is only one uh, core, only, only one CPU uh, has been brought up and it uses uh, either the data that is built into the kernel itself, which is not used in RHEL, or uh, the data provided into the initMFS. And more specifically, the uh, spe 
specific uh, uncompressed part of the image camera size. So, uh, how it is packaged? Um, and why it is packaged separately? Because, uh, as I've mentioned, the, it's uh, been treated by the Linux kernel now differently than uh, any other firmware. And, uh, well, why not uh, just package it in the Linux firmware package where all the rest of the firmware is related? Um, the first uh, reason is that uh, historically it was different, and then, well, the first reason is basically uh, it was historically made this way. The second one is uh, that uh, is, uh, while it's the process of publishing uh, microcode by uh, Intel is more straightforward and more open uh, than it used to be, it's uh, still uh, published separately and it's not a part of the Linux firmware package. And uh, as I mentioned, since 2018, it uh, actually turned out out to be more useful uh, that way because instead of up, uh, updating a huge multi hundred megabyte package, you will get uh, to update on the package that uh, is several megabytes in size. Um, so the package is named Microcode CTL, even though uh, there is no more Microcode CTL binary that were aided uh, in uploading microcode to the kernel because, well, originally it was some weird text format that is, was used by Intel for distributing microcode and uh, kernel accepted the binary format, basically the one that is used to upload uh, the microcode to the processor. Uh, and it's supported on um, various uh, rel z streams. Uh, in addition to the microcode update files themselves, uh, package contains also some caveats uh, which I will talk a bit uh, later. Uh, so there are some scripts that related to microcode updates and uh, scripts and toolings and some documentation. And also there are some RPM scripts that probably was mentioning. Um, so what's caveats? Caveats is a homegrown mechanism of uh, treating uh, specific uh, microcode updates differently uh, based on uh, some information about the system. And uh, it's originally coined by the way it, the directory with uh, Broadwell uh, microcode has been named uh, because there was uh, an issue that prevented it from loading on uh, CPUs with uh, lo uh, early microcode revisions. Uh, basically, there was some uh, working, clicking, and uh, without specific uh, Linux kernel patches, it was uh, led to hang. And it evolved a bit when uh, the, we have started to get microcode updates regularly, and some of them wasn't really good, weren't really good. Um, so the caveat itself is not a rocket science. It's basically a specific microcode update and the configuration of files that describes uh, when it should be or shouldn't be uh, applied. And also some uh, disclaimer that is provided, a message to, that is provided to, to a user, and some readme file that tells him or her what to do. Um, so what contains, what is content into a configuration? It's uh, well, some straightforward stuff, like to which kernel apply, and to which microcode uh, revisions uh, apply, Microcode, this microcode update, but uh, recently it, the, some more tricky stuff has been added. For example, this uh, uh, additional uh, CPU segment uh, value that is uh, yet another CPU segment not uh, related to the previous uh, one that is decided into MSR value. This one is decided into uh, PCI configuration space of one of the virtual PCI devices uh, well, present as part of the platform. And yes, also the, sometimes uh, we need to parse DMI data because uh, we won't uh, restrict microcode loading only some specific uh, systems. Um, yeah, the caveat infrastructure contains also scripts that will tell us 
uh, whether a caveat should on, uh, is X or not, whether a macro database should or not be applied. Uh, some uh, script that uh, populates uh, other ways uh, inside the lib firmware directory. Uh, and uh, uh, some scripts that will basically allow triggering uh, microcode update, wait microcode code update. Um, but also checks for some weird things like whether we are running into a, a virtualized environment or not because there used to be a, a, real, kernel, a real kernel bug that well, hangs when we are trying to update microcode into certain environments. So in order to for user to express its preferences in, uh, with respect to certain caveats, the, more, the most user-friendly interface has been chosen. It's by placing random files uh, in random places. And since it's just uh, random files, uh, there are also some additional actions that have to be done uh, in order to, for this preference to be enacted. Or, well, it can, uh, this preference, since these preferences are taken into account uh, on updates, well, just wait for the next update. Um, another part of the infrastructure is a drug art module because drug art has uh, some, all its own logic with respect to uh, generating any time of S and also responsible for uh, generating early interval phase where microcodes are based are placed. Uh, this uh, module also affects this logic by uh, generating uh, the set of directories where the card uh, should be source the microcode update. Basically, this aforementioned uh, microcode, uh, 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 this overlays, which the card has no idea about. And uh, to Give some overview. Uh, there is a list of the caveats uh, that we currently have in REL. So the infamous Broadwell issue, which is still hitting us, uh, despite the claim by Intel that it has been fixed. Uh, there used to be a Sandy Bridge issue that, well, basically uh, there was uh, some issues with using uh, the newly introduced uh, where we uh, where where W behavior on the MDS patched uh, microcodes uh, revisions. Um, the other one is this uh, uh, loading microcode inside the hypervisor issue, uh, basically which uh, forced uh, to moving basically all the microcode files into the caveats. Um, next one is yes the. Uh, Skylake uh, server, uh, Skylake non-server, uh, Kaby Lake, uh, that is specific to Dell only because oh, only Dell requested and it was only observed on Dell systems. And uh, the early Tiger Lake update. Okay, what it contains in the rest of the package is basically a set of scripts that uh, decide when to trigger uh, any time of its regeneration. And uh, it has some history. Basically, uh, there, was some back, there was some back and forth with regards when to update an initram FS and, and for which kernels. Um, originally, we tried to regenerate all. Well, after we decided that oh, it's good to have uh, new microcode uh, updates uh, being placed into initram FS onto microcode uh, update, package update. But uh, it led to issues with Dracut and with the fact that, well, uh, it uh, takes eternity on some systems when there are a lot of kernels installed. So uh, in the end, we, uh, we ended up with this weird uh, behavior that we update the kernel we are running on and the Three, up to three kernels that are newer than the kernel we are running on, which well, allows us uh, to update also the neutral phase for the kernels that have been installed after the microcode update or the, uh, together, or more specifically, together with the microcode update. There is some documentation, um, basically that the one that on one side document caveats, uh, on the other that documents microcode. 
Um, yes. Uh, also, for those who want to figure out what microcode revisions uh, are part of the specific uh, microcode SQL update package, uh, there is uh, uh, ways to do that. Uh, as well as some information that is installed as part of the package itself. So, yes, uh, there are some differences between packages between RHEL 6 and uh, later revisions. Basically, RHEL 6 uh, stuck with the old uh, microcode uh, bit me mechanism, and the 7 moved to the newer one. So, but despite that, he still had, has had some legacy stuff like the microcode SQL program or like converter program or, or well, having been uh, architecture specific until row nine. But yeah, that's mostly my minor stuff. Um, the release process is uh, more or less straightforward. The only difference is that well, when we have embargoed stuff, we have to package a non-public uh, uh, tarbo and then have updated it after the public, uh, uh, the uh, update is unembargoed. Um, and the testing is uh, performant, performed both uh, automa uh, automatically and uh, during the build and manual during the release to try to catch as early as possible the possible issues. So, um, there are a lot of to improve in uh, the packaging specifically uh, it would be nice to not uh, mess with dracad and uh, probably to make all everything more transparent uh, and get rid of all the weird stuff it has accumulated over the years but yeah this is probably it yeah, some resources if you have more interest in this uh, yeah do you have any questions Yes, yes, uh, basically uh, uh, it, uh, so the question is whether uh, microcode CTL uh, package uh, handles or not uh, AMD microcode. Um, uh, yes, uh, the package uh, contained uh, the AMD microcode updates in uh, RHEL 6 and before, in RHEL 6, RHEL 6, RHEL 5, uh, but um, it only contained it. It didn't do anything with it. Um, and uh, the only reason that it was there is basically because AMD has uh, placed, has provided the microcode separately, but after some time they started to do it as part of Linux firmware package. A Linux firmware repository which is went into Linux firmware package. Uh, could you expand a bit more on the versioning for L8? Like how it uh, Yes, the it's a bit issues. weird. Um, because the original idea was, well, to provide information about the uh, microcode uh, version you're installing uh, uh, in the package name itself. And, uh, but... It didn't work well with uh, the fact that we don't do rebases, say, in that stream. So basically, we have to carry both the version we've released uh, in, on the JA, general availability of specific RHEL minor release, and the version we are actually packaging. So we have like uh, this like uh, pair of versions of which you probably interested only in the latter one, which is provided as a part of uh, RPM package release. Does it answer your question? So how did it turn great for the Z-Stream releases? That's the Sorry, part. What? You mentioned that it turned great for Z-Stream releases, so how do you mean that? Well, uh, I mean that uh, basically uh, there is a specific uh, process for uh, rebases uh, of packages, uh, and uh, basically, uh, uh, rebases in that stream are, uh, well, frowned upon, <laughs> I would say. Uh, so, yeah, the, basically what, what we did is just uh, providing it uh, as a release to, like, a hack. 
probably we I will ditch it and uh, like just uh, provide it as a base. But well, let's see. The issue is, is with that is that basically we do always do that un, un, uh, under embargo, and uh, there is no much time in like in, in the wiggle room uh, in, is fighting the process. But yeah, like in general, it's probably better to just have it uh, into the like just one version. The other thing that was I was originally a bit was afraid is uh, update between minor rel versions. That well, you can get uh, in the stream the version that is not released into the newer version. And but yeah, I think that it's not a major concern. It's 